guys in the dark. When I was about 12 or 13, I was babysitting for a neighbor. They had a nine-year-old son and a seven-year-old daughter. I usually played around with the son, as he was just old enough to not feel like I was humoring a little kid. The little sister would just tag along. For some reason, she had a fit that day that I never played with her. I felt pretty bad, as I was kind of ignoring her, and didn't want her to tell her parents that I didn't dole out the play fairly, so I decided to play dolls with her. Her brother had gotten mad, and started having a little fit about it himself. I rolled my eyes at him, and told him he wasn't a baby. He could handle me playing with his little sister. I then went into her room, because she wanted to play with the big doll house that was in there. I play with her for a couple of minutes before I hear the son's footsteps stop in the hall in front of the open door. I turn around, expecting to end up rolling my eyes at him once again. He was holding an axe, a little one, Boy Scouts, I think, and looked very, very mad. I reflectively closed the door and held it shut. He started hacking at the door. I had my back up against the door as I was holding it shut. I kept imagining him hacking all the way through it into my back. I was screaming and crying for him to please stop. I said, I'll play with you. I'm sorry. Please, just stop. His parents had to come home with amazing timing right about then. He ran into his own room, and I ran downstairs to them as quickly as I could. I told them what had happened. I wonder what happened to him. The family that I babysat for needed me to work while the mother was in her office working with her clients. She would still be home at the time, just not able to take care of her kids. The kids were six. We'll call this one John. And four. We'll call this one Colin. My job was to keep the children alive and entertained. One day the mother told me that I could take them out back, let them use the trampoline. While jumping, Colin accidentally hurt John, who then hit Colin back. I warned John not to do it again, but he did it twice. I grabbed John told him that he was going to have time out. I had him put on his shoes while I spoke to Colin. I explained to Colin that I would be right back and looked directly at John. John was about halfway back to the house when he realized that I was not with him. He immediately sprinted into the house, locked the door right behind him. At this point, I was sprinting around the house to the other door that I knew was open. I jumped inside the door to see John nearly make it in time to lock the door. He proceeded to scream like a burning banshee. I grabbed him, and I take him to his room. All the while, he screamed for his mother that he knows is in the room right across the hall. I brought Colin inside and had him color downstairs. Within about five minutes, I heard the upstairs door open. John was leaving the room. I went to go check on him. He saw me, screamed, ran right back into his room, and slammed the door. This happened at least five more times one in which he actually locked himself in the bathroom instead of his own room. Eventually, his mother had came out, explained to him that I am in charge, and he needed to apologize to me and to Colin before he could even leave his room. He cried, ran right back into his room. The mother went back into her office, and then continued to work. Half an hour later, I hear the door open once again, and John walks downstairs and started playing with Colin. I asked him what he was doing. He acted like nothing had happened. I asked him if his mom wanted him to do anything. He said no. I told him that I heard everything. He screamed and then ran back into his room. For the next hour, he disguised himself as a pirate, a pumpkin, a trash can, and a woman named Jill, trying to sneak out of his room. This continued until he stepped out of the room where I was waiting for him just inches outside. This time he got a little creative and tried to push me aside. He sprinted forward, tripped, and then fell into a basket. He was screaming and crying louder than anything that I have ever heard. His mother then stepped out, apologized, paid, and then sent me home. I had babysat for this family many times before. Half of the time, shit like this would happen. I have not babysat for them since. Basically, it was just some crazy kids who tried to fool his mom to disguise himself as a pumpkin and walking like he was in Scooby-Doo. While in my last year at university, I was trying to earn a little extra credit money and decided to post ads online for babysitting and dog walking services in my local area. 
Most people with ads on there had put a picture of themselves, and so did I. Logic being that parents would want to check out potential babysitters by appearance, too. Most people put contact numbers on there, too, so I also had done that, thinking that it might give potential customers more points of contact than just messaging through the ad site. So within about 45 minutes of posting this ad, I'm downstairs cooking dinner. I hear my phone ringing in the bedroom, but I'm tied up with hot pans on the stove. So I left it, annoyed that I had missed a potential customer. However, I do hear the phone ring once again, and again, and again. I dash up as soon as I free myself from cooking and go and pick up the phone. When I pick up, all I hear is heavy breathing. So naturally after that, I don't get a reply, I just hang up. The phone rings again as soon as I put it down. I pick it up again, and eventually a guy replies. The guy starts off normal. I figured that perhaps he had just had a bad line before. He first explains that he has two kids under five, and then asks me if I think I can handle them. Having experience with some pretty shitty behaved kids in the past, I tell him yes. He then asks me if I stay overnight when babysitting. This had pulled up a red flag in my mind. I firmly told him no. After this, he then goes silent again, and all I hear is some heavy breathing. I ask if he is still there. And then suddenly he says, Are you a virgin? I hang up on him. The phone keeps ringing and ringing and ringing for another hour non-stop. He had withheld his number, so I couldn't specifically block that number. But then I found the function to block withheld numbers on my phone. Did that. Deleted my number from the ad site. And then I proceeded to message every other person on there in my local area with a babysitting ad to warn them. It turns out that some of them had similar experiences to what I had. A few years ago, a mother and a father that I babysat for decided that they needed a break. They wanted to head out for a night on the town. So they called me, their most trusted babysitter. When I arrived, the two children were already fast asleep in bed. So I just got to sit around and make sure that everything was okay with the children. Later on in the night... I got bored, so I wanted to go watch TV, but I couldn't watch it downstairs because they didn't have cable downstairs. The parents didn't want their children watching too much garbage, so I called them, asked them if it was okay if I could watch TV in their room. Of course, the parents had said okay, but I had one final request for them. I asked if I could cover up the large clown statue that happened to be in their bedroom with a blanket or a cloth because it made me very nervous. Suddenly the phone line was silent for a moment, and the father, who was talking to me at the time, said, Go take the children out of the house. We'll call the police. We don't happen to have a clown statue. I quickly ran and got all the children, and got them out of the house safely. The police later had caught the clown impersonator running down the street. It just so happens that the clown was an enraged serial killer, who had escaped from jail. He's now locked up, and is harm to no one anymore. I'm just glad that I happened to ask them about that, because God knows what could have happened to me if I just sat there and watched TV. I had posted this months ago in another thread, but I'll share it again. When I was in high school, I was babysitting for two neighborhood kids. The little girl, Emily, never wanted to go to sleep. She would come up with any excuse to not have to go to bed every single weekend. She tried to stay up later and later. So when she got up and told me that she was scared to go back to bed, that she kept on hearing voices, I just wrote it off as her trying to get out of going to bed. I had put her and her brother just into bed an hour ago, and the boy was already asleep. I humored her, and I decided to go into her room and I listened. I didn't hear a single thing. I checked out her window, everything, and heard and saw nothing. So I compromised with her. I laid in her bed with her until she had fallen asleep. After she fell asleep, I went in the hall, and then I heard voices. I felt all the blood rush out of me, and all I could think about was Emily coming into the living room an hour ago, crying that she was scared, that she had heard voices begging me to believe her, and the voices were coming from inside the house. More specifically, down the hall where Justin was. I went over to the room, and I knocked. I don't know why I knocked but I think I was just so scared that I didn't know what else to do. 
The voices had stopped instantly. I heard Justin. It sounded like he was crying. He was around nine years old at the time, and his parents were taking a weekend trip away. I opened up the door, and he was laying face down on the bed crying. I was sort of relieved that I figured he was just upset his parents were going to be gone so long, and I had made the whispering up in my head. So I went over to the bed, tried to ask Justin what was wrong, and he said, They're here. The next thing I know, I hear the closet door being banged open, and I hear screams. I just threw myself on Justin. I didn't even bother with turning and seeing what was going on. I thought someone was in the house, and that they were going to kill us. So I had covered his body with mine. I was so scared that I didn't know what to do. I had already started to cry, and begging things like, Please take anything. Don't touch the children. Please, please. I'll do anything, just don't hurt us. Then I realized that everyone was just laughing, including Justin. I turned to see two of my friends in the room. They had thought that it would be funny to play a joke on me. And we all lived in the same neighborhood, so they got Justin in on it as well. They were just laughing and repeating everything that I was saying mockingly. I went from being terrified out of my mind to more enraged than I have ever been in my life. We eventually made up. And then it was just like this funny thing to tell people about later on. I can tell you that that was the scariest moment of my life, and I definitely am glad that it was just a prank and not an actual intruder. When I was in high school, I spent about a week babysitting two kids in their house while their parents were away on business. Although I lived in a fairly rural area, the family lived within 10 minutes of my house. I knew the neighborhood pretty well, as I had babysat for the family before. It was late October, Halloween weekend, and as a typical 17-year-old, I was disappointed that I was not out with my friends, and instead stuck inside babysitting. It was just about bedtime for the kids, so it was pitch black outside and silent. The house I was sitting in had a large backyard and a sort of garage that had been converted to an apartment. A young man lived in that apartment but the family was insistent that he never comes to the house, and he would not bother me. As I'm putting the kids to bed, the doorbell rings. Since I knew my family and friends were out for Halloween, I opened up the door without thinking about it. It was my best friend, who also lived nearby, so she knew that the house that I was staying at. She had a couple of our guy friends with her. She explained that they were on their way to the corn maze and wanted to stop by. Grateful to see them before they went, We hung out in the kitchen for probably around 20 minutes before they went on their way. By that time, the kids were asleep upstairs, so I went around the house, locked all of the doors, and closed all the blinds. It was a pretty modern-style home. An entire inside of the house was just straight windows. After I get the house ready, I settle down in the living room to watch TV. It's probably around 30 minutes or so has passed when I hear a knock at the door once again. It was faint, so I turned off the TV to hear it better. Hearing the knock again, I could feel the hairs on my arm stand up. It was pretty late, and I had no idea who would be coming to the house at this hour. Suddenly, the faint knock turns into a violent, loud banging, running on adrenaline. I sprint upstairs to the master bedroom. I didn't have a cell phone at the time, and knowing that there was a phone in the room, I figured it would be a lot safer to be near a phone and the children. Now, not only is the door being pounded on, but the doorbell is being rung over and over again, insistently. I pound my house number into the phone. My mom picks up. I panically told her what was going on downstairs. She gives the phone to my dad. He says that he will be there. I was relieved to hear this. I clutch the phone in my hand, and I go out to the landing to check on the kids. The eldest was standing outside of her door, confused and afraid. I quickly told her that it was just my dad coming to check on us, and to go back into her room, and please go back to bed. After she goes back in her room, I rush downstairs to make sure that the doors are all still locked, running past the wall of windows to get to the door. Suddenly all the windows start shaking violently. I'm absolutely terrified at this point, so I run to the TV room, look for something that I could use as a weapon. Suddenly the ringing and pounding just stops. I sit there stunned, in absolute silence. 
Then a single doorbell ring shatters the silence and makes me practically jump out of my skin. Feeling a rush of relief upon realizing that it was my dad, I rush to open up the door. There was nobody there. I slam the door shut and run to grab the phone. I call my house once again. Mom, I whisper, is dad there? She tells me that he can't find the car keys, and he hasn't even left yet. I feel the blood run out of my face. I'm crying hysterically at this point. So my mom stays on the phone with me and tells me when my dad finally leaves. I see a pair of headlights come tearing through the dark. The sheer speed of the car told me that it definitely was my dad. I throw open the front door and I run out. Suddenly, from around the corner, three shadows come out. My dad, wielding a baseball bat at this point, runs towards the shadowy figures, screaming and waving his arms. The closer that they get, I realize that it was my friends. Instead of going to the corn maze, they decided that it would be fun to scare me on Halloween. I felt a rush of relief and anger. My dad bitched them out. And although I did not get a lot of sleep that night, I was happy to know that it was just my friends playing a prank. I know the story is kind of lame, but it was honestly the scariest moment of my life. I was truly afraid for my safety and the children that I was looking after. I'm just glad that it was my friends and not somebody worse. I have to leave some identifying details out in this story. I was living in a very secluded place. I got a reference from a friend who was busy to babysit for this family who was vacationing nearby at a house near the ocean. House turns out to be less than a mile from the beach with nothing but sand between us and it. There were only a couple vacationing homes and they were all pitch black when we arrived. The dad picked me up from the house. There was no moon or street lights, so I couldn't see the ocean, but we were close enough to hear it. This would have been creepy enough all by itself. So the parents leave. We have popcorn, and then we watch some TV. For an hour or so before it's bedtime. The kid is about three or four. I wasn't quite sure. He didn't tell me at all. So with our current horror movie local, with this creepy thing number two, I put him in this travel crib to sleep in and settled down in a chair in the room because I thought maybe he'd be scared to go to sleep alone in a strange place with his parents gone. Well, he proceeded to kneel in the crib and stare at me through the mesh walls of it for a solid 30 minutes. I tried coaxing him to lay down, offered to tell him a story or two. About this time, the mom calls to check in on him. I inform her that he's not falling asleep, and she says, Oh, you have to leave him alone in there and close the door. You can leave the light on and just ignore whatever you hear. He'll tire himself out eventually. So I'm like, what the fuck? But whenever I tell him goodnight and leave to close the door, he'll still just fucking stare directly at me. I go to sit in the next room. This thumping noise starts. Starts slow. And then continues to get louder. So I get up to peek into the room to see what he is doing. I know the mom told me not to worry about it. But hell, I had to see what the hell was going on. I look in, and he's banging his head on the side of the crib pretty hard. But it's one of those flimsy travel cribs. More like a pack-and-play pen than anything, so he's not really going to hurt himself. But he was lifting the whole thing a few inches off the ground with the force of his head bouncing. Soon as I go to close the door, he stops, stares directly at me once again with the most blank and creepy face I've ever seen. I quickly close the door. The banging starts again, and continues for another 20 to 30 minutes, and then stops. I peek in one last time, and he's fast asleep. His butt is in the air, face down on the mattress, but turned to the side so I knew that he could breathe okay. The next three hours of a complete silence were a bit torturous. I could not wait to leave. It's possibly he had some issues, lack of speech, and his behavior, but not to warn me at all was kind of wrong from the parents. I never sat for them again, thank God. This may be the worst day of my life. I was around 15-ish, babysitting my little sister, who was a toddler. She would walk and open up doors at this point. My parents were making a quick run to the store and left me in charge. After a few minutes of watching TV, I noticed that it was a little bit too quiet. 
I checked her room. She wasn't there. I checked everywhere else with growing alarm, looking and calling for her, but she was nowhere to be found. There was a playground across the street that she liked, so I sprinted over there to go look for her. At this point, I was about 90% adrenaline and panic. Still, there was no sign of her. There was a group of three grade schoolers there, so I described her and asked if they had seen her around. One of the boys told me that he saw a girl matching her description get into a blue car. We don't own a blue car, nor do any of the family friends. I can't adequately describe the feeling of dread, panic, and hopelessness that completely overwhelmed me. I sprinted from one end of the block to the other, hoping to catch a glimpse of this blue car. I ran through around the adjoining elementary school, hoping maybe she was there. Never mind that. I'd already been told that she had gotten into a stranger's car. I was completely irrational and was hoping that I had misheard that kid or something. Or maybe, please, God, she was back. After some kind of eternity of hell, I ran back home to call 911. By this time, my parents were back, and lo and behold, my sister was there with them. It turns out she did open a door and wander off, into the garage, because she wanted to go along to the store. My parents didn't think to notify me at all, so I guess that it ended okay. I locked myself in the bathroom and sobbed for a little while. Then I was overcome by an overwhelming urge to crush the face of that fucking little shit who had lied to me. I bolted back to the playground with no clear plan in mind, but it was going to be some real Lord of the Flies kind of shit. He wasn't there when I got back. I suppose that's good, because I was sufficiently older, bigger, and utterly blind with rage, and probably would have murdered him at that point. An apology would have been nice, though. I was in grade school at the time, and was told to watch my brother, a year younger than me. My doorbell had rang once. I didn't answer because I was taught to never answer the door when young and home alone, so I just ignored the ring. Then suddenly the doorbell is pressed another five times, so I assume that it's my family or a friend of mine. I go into my dining room and peer through the window. A man in a trench coat with a hat is walking away from my home and starts pacing in the driveway. I freak out and check that my back door is locked. I get my brother to do the garage and the front door. The man comes back as my brother is sitting underneath the door as the man is now only knocking and ringing the doorbell. But he is also trying to turn the doorknob. After a few minutes, he goes onto the road and reverses, right into what I call his kidnapper car down the street, still wondering what would have happened if he turned the knob his first visit to my door. I was watching two boys, maybe 12 and 11 years old. Their parents liked to party quite a lot. One of the reasons that they would pay me to watch their children. One night they go out, order pizza for dinner. The delivery driver forgets the pop. The younger child says there is orange juice in the fridge. So I grab the pitcher, not thinking anything of it. Pour them each into a glass. They drink and eat without saying a single word. Through the course of the night, they keep pouring themselves cups of orange juice. They start acting strange, stumbling, talking pretty odd, stuff like that. I call the parents and ask if I should do anything. They tell the parents everything that they ate and drank. Their dad ends up telling me that OJ was just a giant screwdriver that his wife and him were going to split when they got home. Luckily, I didn't take too much heat for it, because he said he should have warned me about it beforehand. I had made the mistake of hiring a 13-year-old to watch my son when he was around 3 years old. She babysat for my neighbor all the time. I thought that she was competent. We were out of town when she called to complain that he wouldn't stop crying, and that she didn't know what to do about it. When we finally had gotten home, we found some videos that had gone missing. We checked the browser history, and found that she had been online pretty much the entire time that she was there, and that she was into some really weird and kinky stuff. Like Japanese anime porn. What the fuck? Oh, and she walked out of the apartment with one of our phones. We had to call her mother to get it back. I definitely don't plan on having her babysit for me ever again. I had posted this months ago in another thread, but I'll share it again. When I was in high school, I was babysitting for two neighborhood kids. The little girl, Emily, never wanted to go to sleep. 
She would come up with any excuse to not have to go to bed every single weekend. She tried to stay up later and later. So when she got up and told me that she was scared to go back to bed, that she kept on hearing voices, I just wrote it off as her trying to get out of going to bed. I had put her and her brother just into bed an hour ago, and the boy was already asleep. I humored her, and I decided to go into her room and I listened. I didn't hear a single thing. I checked out her window, everything, and heard and saw nothing. So I compromised with her. I laid in her bed with her until she had fallen asleep. After she fell asleep, I went in the hall, and then I heard voices. I felt all the blood rush out of me, and all I could think about was Emily coming into the living room an hour ago, crying that she was scared, that she had heard voices begging me to believe her, and the voices were coming from inside the house. More specifically, down the hall where Justin was. I went over to the room and I knocked. I don't know why I knocked, but I think I was just so scared that I didn't know what else to do. The voices had stopped instantly. I heard Justin. It sounded like he was crying. He was around nine years old at the time, and his parents were taking a weekend trip away. I opened up the door, and he was laying face down on the bed crying. I was sort of relieved that I figured he was just upset his parents were going to be gone so long. And I had made the whispering up in my head. So I went over to the bed, tried to ask Justin what was wrong, and he said, They're here. The next thing I know, I hear the closet door being banged open, and I hear screams. I just threw myself on Justin. I didn't even bother with turning and seeing what was going on. I thought someone was in the house, and that they were going to kill us. So I had covered his body with mine. I was so scared that I didn't know what to do. I had already started to cry and begging things like, Please take anything. Don't touch the children. Please, please. I'll do anything. Just don't hurt us. Then I realized that everyone was just laughing, including Justin. I turned to see two of my friends in the room. They had thought that it would be funny to play a joke on me. And we all lived in the same neighborhood. So they got Justin in on it as well. They were just laughing and repeating everything that I was saying mockingly. I went from being terrified out of my mind to more enraged than I have ever been in my life. We eventually made up, and then it was just like this funny thing to tell people about later on. I can tell you that that was the scariest moment of my life, and I definitely am glad that it was just a prank and not an actual intruder. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell for notifications on future videos and become a stalker of the night, and I'll see you next time.